If you are a brand new DJ, a beginner DJ, or very early on in your DJing career, then this series of videos is going to be right up your street. I'm taking it right back to basics and putting together a series of videos concentrating on the key features and functions of your DJ controller. So if you've just literally bought your first controller, you've opened the box and you're thinking, what on earth do any of these buttons, dials, knobs, faders, etc., do? Then this is the series of videos for you. A couple of quick things before we get started with these tutorials. Number one is that I'm going to be filming these as a bunch of bite sized videos covering off a key feature or function of a DJ controller in each video. Reason being is that everybody is at a unique place in their DJing journey and you may understand some functions of your DJ controller but not others. That way you can just watch the videos that are going to be the most useful or relevant to you because I'm not here to waste anybody's time and scrubbing through a, a really long video to find the most relevant part for you is probably going to be a bit boring. So there's going to be a load of videos um, as part of this series that I'm putting together. So do watch the ones that are most relevant to you. Second point to mention is that for all of these videos, I'm going to be using this controller here. This is the Pioneer DJ DDJ FLX4. Now, if you don't have this controller, this is not an issue, it's not a problem, because uh, effectively, most controls on a controller are in a, quite a universal place. And so you can apply the knowledge of these videos to any manufacturer that you um, have bought from. So for example, the, we'll cover of course in a lot more detail, but the play, pause and cue button is always in the bottom left corner. The, the speed adjustment is always on the bottom right. The jog wheel is typically in the middle. And we're gonna be covering off most of the universal functions and features of these controllers. So don't worry if you haven't got this particular controller. A lot of it you're going to be able to apply to your own device. So with that out of the way, let's get straight into it. Today we're covering off the two key modes of your DJ controller. So for today's tutorial and to kick things off, we're going to talk about the two different modes of your controller, vinyl mode and CDJ mode. Now, depending on which mode you have your controller set in will determine how your controller behaves. And that is the reason why we're doing this video first. The main controls that will change depending on the mode is the jog wheel on both sides. That's the wheel in the middle of both of the decks. And also as well, the play, pause and cue button. Those are the main controls that will alter. Put simply, vinyl mode, if you have it in this mode, essentially means your controller will behave in the traditional sense of a piece of vinyl on a turntable. Very good mode if you want to get into scratching, if you want to um, do loads of effects with the crossfader and, and you know scratching the platter. Um, and a lot of, I guess, traditional DJs that have learned on vinyl will probably have their controller set up in this way. CDJ mode just basically emulates digital CD players. Um, and when you have it in this mode, so that, that kind of scratching noise, what happens when you move this vinyl platter backwards and forwards is completely removed from that. And also the play, pause and cue buttons do behave slightly differently. There is no right or wrong mode so to speak, to have your controller set into. It's down to personal preference. And when I'm actually at gigs, to be honest, I toggle between the two all the time. Now, in terms of toggling between the two modes, depending on which uh, controller you are working off, some controllers will have a dedicated toggle switch that will switch between vinyl and CDJ mode. Now, the great thing with Pioneer is that um, most of their controllers do have this. It's not found on more of their entry level devices, but the more expensive devices, you will have a dedicated button. However, um, for some of the cheaper devices, such as this one, which is the FLX4, you will have to have a look for the settings in uh, the record box settings to, to change between the two. And you can set up a keyboard shortcut. In terms of recognizing on screen which mode you have your controller in, in Recordbox, it is identified using this blue circle, as you can see on screen around the deck. So if I turn vinyl mode off, you can see 
on the left hand deck the blue circle is in fact removed that basically indicates to me that it's in cdj mode rather than vinyl mode so to give you now a bit of an example of how the two modes behave i'm going to load up a track and first of all we'll kick off with vinyl mode and then we'll look at what cdj mode um, does in terms of the difference so i've got a track loaded let's first of all, of all kick off with vinyl mode so i hit play and you'll notice as soon as I hit the platter, the music switches off, it's touch sensitive. And if I move, and if I move the platter in a forward or backward motion, you can see I'm pretty much scratching the record as if this was a piece of vinyl. Important to note that the outer ring of the jog wheel is used for adjusting the speed. Speeding the record up if we turn it clockwise. And slowing the record down counterclockwise. Very much kind of emulating almost what a vinyl turntable would do because back in the day of Technics, you would use the outer ring to make slight speed adjustments to the track, most commonly to slow it down, but you have both here. Important to note that this is not a permanent speed adjustment to the track, it will stop adjusting the speed as soon as you release turning the jog wheel in either direction. If we move across to CDJ mode, You'll notice, you'll notice straight away that the jog wheel no longer becomes touch sensitive. And rather than scratching on the platter, the whole wheel is used to adjust the speed of the track. So almost like the controls of the outer ring in vinyl mode and now apply to the whole of the jog wheel. So that's basically the two different modes in a nutshell. I'm gonna talk a little bit more detail in a future video about how these two different modes affect the play, pause and cue button in a dedicated tutorial because it's a little bit more in depth. But those are the two modes that you can get used to. What I would say is that there is no right or wrong mode to have your controller in. Just toggle between the two, have a play with both and see which one you feel most comfortable playing with. Thank you so much for watching this episode. I really hope that you have found it useful. If you did and you are still watching at this moment, please do me a massive favor and hit the thumbs up button. That helps me to get this video out to more people that are going to find this type of content useful and stick around for the next episode. I'll see you soon.